Call me Filiac. Audiophiliac. No, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And today, well, today it is all about the Sennheiser HD 560S. You know, I go way back with uh, Sennheiser. I've owned a bunch. And I guess the, 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 the headphone that's most comparable to this one is the Sennheiser HD 600 or 650. But I use the Mastrop HD 6XX. They're about the same price. This one, the 560S, is different. And it has an all new driver. Uh, it's called, it has a polymer blend. It sounds kind of weird, but anyway, and it's angled towards your ears. I don't know, something's going on here, and I do know what it is because this headphone is really transparent, really neutral, super accurate. Now, which isn't usually my preference. I, I tend to go for sweeter, prettier, or, but no, this time, this time I'm seduced by accuracy, especially in a headphone that retails for $200. Now, it's super comfortable. It's very light. It's 240 grams. Um, that is mostly plastic, but it feels very durable. The uh, ear pads are velour. Very comfortable. They let your ears breathe. It's checking all the right boxes. Comfort, accuracy. It's open. Oh, it is a full-size open back over-the-ear headphone. Because it is open, you can't really listen to it outside, there's too much noise. This is a stay-at-home headphone, or when you take to work, or if it's a quiet place, or uh, you know when you're traveling in a hotel room, that sort of thing, sure. But anyway, yes, it does come with an adapter, a 6.3 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter adapter connector thing, right? Cool. So you can use it with a phone, and by the way, I did use it with my iPhone, just to see how it would work, because it is forgot to mention a medium impedance design. It's 120 ohms. So, so that's not low, but it's, it's not really that high. Anyway, I tried it with my iPhone 11. It sounded great. Had plenty of power. No problem. So if you need to use this headphone on the go, it's not going to be an issue in terms of driving the headphone. What else can I tell you? Well, uh, it has a two-year warranty. <clears throat> that's kind of unusual for headphones. Uh, it is designed in Germany but made in China. That's, I guess, what you kind of need to do if you're going to make a $200 headphone that's as high performance as this one is. To put, this, uh, to put it in some sort of context, I decided to compare the 560S against, yes, the Mastrop HD6XX, but also a Grado SR325E, and just for fun, a Hi-Fi Man Diva or Deva, it's a planar magnetic headphone. Um, so, and they're all sort of in the same price range. The Grado actually is the most expensive. But in any case, I spent a, a good chunk of this review com going, you know, taking headphones on and off and comparing the 560S to the others. But most of my listing was done at home with uh, MyTech Brooklyn DAC Plus. It's a headphone amplifier slash DAC. Great combination. So the first piece of music I played was from Neil Young's upcoming archive series, uh, Volume 2. The first one came out forever ago, more than 10 years ago. It's a big multi-disc set, or however you listen to it. But right now I can only hear one track. It's called Home Fires. And it's just Neil on guitar. He's playing harmonica. And of course he's singing. And it's, and it's in uh, high res. It's 192. It's MQA. I was listening on Tidal. And it sounds freaking great. In a matter of fact, it sounded so open, I had to take the headphones off for a second to make sure the sound wasn't also coming from the speakers. It wasn't. It was just that the image and the space was fantastic. And Neil sounded great. This, this series, this archive is from, I think, 1972 to 1976. With that as a start, I, I took off the 560S and popped on the HD6XX, the Sennheiser. And I was expecting they would be similar, but they were not, those two headphones. No, the 560S is far more transparent, pure, clear, uh, and not by a little bit. That's 
amazing because they are about the same price. So there is something really special going on. That was my first clue. And from that, I went to Roseanne Cash's new album, show it to you now, and I just, and it's more of a rock record. And again, the, the, the 560S just had more kick to it. it the, the bottom was better. Uh, she sounded great. The contrast between the two is pretty dramatic. Now, I will say that the HD6XX was more softer, blunter. It was blunting the transients. Now, usually I would be steering towards the softer and prettier alternative here in a comparison, but there was no way. No, the, the 560S just was a clear winner. Get it? Clear winner. So another, uh, another new thing is an old thing. It's uh, Joni Mitchell's archive. And it's a bunch of music from the early 60s before she had a record deal. And it's recorded to analog tape, of course, because it was the early 60s. And uh, there's a lot of tape hits. It was recorded at a radio station. And I was really impressed the way the 560S reproduced the sound of tapis because a lot of time tapis analog tapis which is kind of a broad band noise uh sounds more like from a lot of speakers and headphones it doesn't sound really it doesn't sound correct but the 560s just got that perfectly and when i went to the grado uh sr325e or the hd6xx no, it wasn't happening. I lost that analogness of the analog tape. And as for the music, Joni sounds fantastic. She's singing in a different register than she did when she became famous. So it's a little chestier, fuller sounding. And the first song on the record is uh, House of the Rising Sun. The cl you know, it's a classic tune. It's kind of a basic recording. It's just her on guitar and singing, but it's gorgeous absolutely stunning a lot of the tracks um you know i wouldn't buy this uh on any in any physical format but here and there some of the tracks are really worthwhile there's some live stuff very but again before she was famous if you're into joni mitchell this presents a whole different side to her so i, I i've been obsessed with this song by this guy quantic it's called 1000 watts and it's kind of a funk reggae sort of groove thing and it's funny it's you know it's a humorous song but it's a guy who wants to have a thousand watt sound system and it's just it's infectious and it's my summer choice of the year I just I started hearing it in the summer and it just I kept coming back to it again and again and again and even Mrs. Audiophiliac loves that song and every time it comes up she goes Quantic yeah that's so cool so anyway Quantic uh, which I've heard now probably hundreds of times uh, just sounded yeah I was hearing stuff in the low end that I never heard before that's the thing oh that's the thing about the 560s is the bottom is so good it's so fast it's so tight and it is deep uh, it's got balls <laughs> it's a really impressive again switching back to the HD 6xx it's just a softer blurrier version of the sound really really interesting I was also playing this Miles Davis uh, mix thing, you know, sampled uh, Miles Davis. It's called Evolution of the Groove. And I'm not usually into this sort of thing, but it's it just, Miles' music just works in this context of being sampled and tweaked and fussed with and stuff. Uh, and it's great. And it has some, again, I'm into bass lately, some impressive like bass foundations to these tunes. And I was comparing the 560S to the Hi-Fi Man Diva, which is you know, it can be sold as a Bluetooth headphone or used with a wire. You can buy it without the Bluetooth, and it's $219. $219 for a planar magnetic headphone. It's really cool. And it is a very clean, transparent headphone, but not quite at the 560 range, and the bottom was not as, as potent as the 560S. So I, I do really like uh, the Hi-Fi Mian Diva, Deva, but... No, again, the 560S was the preferred option. Now, I, kept, I'm, I keep raving about the 560S. Is it, is it the best headphone ever? Well, no. <laughs> Matter of fact, I pulled out another Hi-Fi Man headphone, the Sundera, which is full-size planar magnetic headphone, 
and it retails for about $350. And no, the, the, the Sundera is a better headphone than the 560S. It is more transparent. The bass is, is comparable. It's very open sounding, but it's, it's cleaner sounding, even cleaner sounding than the 560S. So yeah, if you got an extra 150 bucks, yeah, get the Sundare. It is a better sounding headphone in almost every regard. But at the price, $200, the 560S is the new world's champion, at least in audiophiliac land. So Steve, what about the Grados, the 325Es? Well, my Grados have the flat ear pads, not the bowl-shaped ones that most new <clears throat> Grados come with. And I like the flatter pads because they're warmer sounding and whatever brightness is coming from a Grado headphone is definitely tamed by the flat pads. So I was using that and it is definitely a warmer, richer sound than the 560S, no doubt about it. It's also a very open sounding headphone equally open to the 560S, but the resolution aspect of it is uh, no contesto. No, the 560S is far more transparent and clear. You're just hearing into the recording, you hear the space, you hear low level details, that sort of clarity, way better with the 560S than the Grado 325E. So, so there you have it. My thoughts on the Sennheiser HD 560S. Um, yeah, color me impressed. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like what I do, please subscribe to this channel. You can hit that button right down there and uh, click away. But beyond that, I can also tell you that you should check out the Patreon, which can be found at p a t r e o n dot com slash audiophiliac, and I will link to that below. But you know, I, I have a new part of this sign off, and that is going to be free music, free audiophile music from Chesky Records and MA Recording. Now, <clears throat> I did videos about their samplers. There's three in total, one from Chesky, two from MA. did those a few months ago. They were very, very popular. So uh, I'm going to put the links to the videos below he this video. So if you want to get some free really great music that's not dynamically compressed, that's not EQ, that's not processed, and really hear what your system can do, check out those free samplers. So in addition to that, well, while you're here, you could check out my playlist, playlists for uh, headphone reviews and speaker reviews and electronics reviews and, of course, music reviews and interviews, interviews with Joe Grado. Joe Grado? No, John Grado. Um, and his sons, and Harry Weisfeld, and his son, and all kinds of super interesting people. Eric Alexander from Tecton. Check out those interviews. Uh, but now I can say my work here is <laughs> at last complete. So thank you again for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.